Brian Hamilton. I'm an instructor here in the Department of Mathematics and Statistics at the University of Calgary. I've been doing this for about three years now. Uh, I was an undergraduate here in Calgary from 2003 to 2007, and then I went on to do my master's and PhD at the University of Waterloo until 2012, and then I returned here to take that position a few years after that. For first year students, I primarily teach our what we call service courses. These are the courses that we teach to business students, to science students, to engineers. They're primarily calculus and linear algebra. And uh, once in a while, they get me to do a statistics course as well. Uh, mixed reviews on that, but uh, mostly it's calculus. For second year, I'm primarily teaching what we call real analysis to our mathematics students. This course has quite the reputation, it's very, very challenging, and it's growing every year. Uh, calculus courses, which include Math 249, 265, 275, 277, 267. Uh, there's also Linear Algebra, Math 211, and Statistics 213. Math 311, Linear Algebra 2, and uh, Mathematics 335 and 355, which is Real Analysis 1. I realized when I was beginning my undergraduate degree that I really loved mathematics. I loved the problem solving, I loved the independent work associated with it, and I, I knew in some sense that I wanted to do mathematics professionally after I graduated. And then when I was in my third year, I began work as an undergraduate TA for some first and second year math courses. And that's when I realized that not only did I love the subject, but I especially loved teaching it. Uh, so that is mostly the reason I continue to pursue my education beyond the undergraduate. Uh, and then near the end of my PhD, I really decided this is what I want to be doing. I want to be teaching uh, mathematics students at a university. So I tailored my career trajectory after that moment. This is my dream job. I'm doing it. My biggest academic accomplishment is, uh, or was, my PhD thesis defense. Uh, I had the, uh, a really mistaken impression about what this event was supposed to be early in my PhD. Um, I always thought of it as something where you're grilled relentlessly and they try to break you down. And as I was nearing the date, I realized that it's not that at all. Rather, I'm the expert. I'm presenting something that I've done, that I know the most about more than anybody else in the world in a very specific, narrow focus. Uh, so I had a huge amount of fun during the defense itself because I was able to teach people that I really respected that were much more senior than me about these things that I've done. I was a good student in undergraduate studies. I was not the best student. I was probably not even the top 10% in most of my math courses. Uh, I was a little bit sloppy when I was a student. I would make mistakes. I would try to race through tests as fast as I possibly could. For some reason, I always took pride in being the first one done, but I was never the best. Uh, it took a lot of time for me to undo these bad habits. Uh, so I feel like by the end of my undergraduate degree, I was better compared to my colleagues than when I started. Uh, but there is uh, always room for improvement, and that was especially true with me. Something that students do that I don't like is when we are solving problems in mathematics, which is a huge part of the majority of mathematics courses. Instead of an enduring, uh, a frustrating situation, students will instead go online and try to find the answer as soon as possible. Now, what makes this a particularly bad habit is most of the learning in mathematics and statistics takes place when you're sitting there completely frustrated and not knowing what you're supposed to do next. Uh, so I think students really need to embrace this frustration. That's how we learn better. And, um, and I, would, I would really advise them to restrain and resist going to Google immediately for every single problem that's put in front of them. You can find me in the gym or in the kitchen. Uh, I think I can confidently state that I'm a great baker. Uh, whether it's bread or cakes or cupcakes or cookies, whatever, I love baking it all and I'm okay at it. My, my, my wife would say that I'm really bad at decorating, I don't have the patience for it, but I can make a great bread, that's for sure. Uh, I'm told that this is going to be on YouTube, so there's no way I'm giving future students any ammunition against me, so I've never done anything crazy, I've been straight-laced my whole life. My biggest fear is that one day I would wake up, and instead of having the job that I have now, I would have to work in an office 
40 hours a week sitting at a desk. Uh, there's something incredibly dynamic and energetic about doing what I do, and I really, really would dislike having that taken away. So my wife and I had two dogs. They came with her when we met. And uh, unfortunately, three years ago, one of them uh, passed away and the other one passed away just last December. So we are actively on the market for a new pair of dogs at least. She wants more than two. I, I still have some way to go on that, I guess. Uh, either The Wire or The Sopranos or Deadwood, depending on which of the three I'm watching at that time. My favorite junk food is the biggest bag of kettle chips you can buy at Costco. Uh, the kettle chips, which I just mentioned, also gluten, anything with gluten is delicious and I love it. And finally dogs and pets in general. I could not live without animals in my life. I usually sleep seven to eight hours a night unless there is a final exam or something that I have to write eminently and then that will maybe get cut in half. So if there's one thing that I wish students could take away from my classes, it's that you have to treat mathematics as an end in itself. It's a, it's a toolkit that helps you in life, not necessarily because the ideas are generally applicable. I mean, for our calculus students, you may never take a derivative in your life again, but rather it teaches you how to problem solve, how to be a rational thinker, how to organize your thoughts, and how to break down complicated problems in step-by-step -step fashion. These are traits that are absolutely applicable to every aspect of life. And uh, while we try to make our courses um, in a way that, that gives students an idea of how you might use this material in your own discipline, at the end of the day, the core idea and the core theme is that it's about you developing these kinds of skills as an individual. That's what's gonna make you more effective in whatever discipline you choose to go into at a later date. My general advice for students is uh, treat university like it's your profession. So I mean, you're here for presumably five courses in your first year, and for most people it stays at that level of intensity until they're finished. And to properly assimilate the information that you're taking in in lectures and complete all of your assignments, it really does take about what a work week encompasses, 40 hours. For many students in many programs, it could actually be considerably higher than that. So I found personally my academic performance improved substantially when I shifted to this thinking. I, was, I started to get up early and I started to do my work from 9 a.m. or whenever you yourself are comfortable starting your work at and trying to do a solid eight hours in the day. And then this amazing thing happened where I felt like I didn't need to dig into my evenings and weekends that much in order to get all my work done up to the level of satisfaction that uh, I required of myself. Certainly if you've got a final coming up or a big essay due, that can be different. You might have to stay up pretty late or even pull an all-nighter, but generally speaking, uh, healthy learning habits are doing things regularly throughout the semester, and uh, this will ensure that you have enough energy left over for when these really intense moments come up in your degree. For students that are really interested in academic research, well, at, at the first year level, this can be a little bit daunting because you're in these classes of hundreds of students, you don't know your professors very well, so how do you really get into research? How do you even discover what research is? So I think the biggest piece of advice I have for students for this is you have to get to know your professors. Uh, while I teach hundreds and hundreds of students each year, the number that come to me and they really want to discuss mathematics uh, beyond the course that I'm teaching them is often very low. So you'll find that with me and probably the most of my colleagues in the Faculty of Science, we'll talk your ear off about whatever research interests us. And once you form those relationships, you'll find it's much easier to make inquiries with professors that you've enjoyed learning from about what they're doing in their labs or what research they're working on, and they can be a very helpful guide in terms of uh, how you can approach research as an undergraduate student.